a second. All right, so good evening, everybody. Today, today will be a day where we will complete our uh, examinations in internal medicine. Today, we want to talk about uh, neurological examination. Okay, neurological examination. And actually, facial nerve examination was part of the neurological examination, which we did yesterday. And today, we will talk about how to do a motor exam, how to do um, a sensory exam, and then we'll add Parkinson's. As a cerebellar exam, it does not usually come. So I won't, I won't waste your time there. But it's very possible to get Parkinson's. Why? Because it is easier to get a Parkinson's uh, patient, for example, than a cerebellar exam. Because usually the cerebellar exam to be a stroke and then final one. But Parkinson's is a chronic disease, isn't it? So it is, it is easier to get a Parkinson's patient. So because of that, I'm going to go through the uh, examination of a patient with Parkinson's. However, um, we'll begin with the um, the new exam, okay, the motor and then the sensory. So usually the the instructions come in different 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 uh, ways, okay. So I always say that whenever you go to internal medicine or even pediatrics, okay, and then you are asked to perform a motor examination. I learned in 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 November actually the. The instruction was to perform a motor examination of the upper upper limbs. They didn't want to waste the candidate's time. But usually, if you hear perform a motor examination, something something hemiparesis stroke or something should be in your mind. You should be preparing your mind or psyching your mind that you're going to discuss a stroke. Albeit it is not always the case. Okay. But when you say motor examination, it means that perform motor examination here, perform motor examination here, and you are going to find a pattern of this. Okay. Then another instruction is perform a neurological examination of the lower limbs. So when the instruction specifies that do motor, do motor. But if, it, but if it says that perform a neurological examination, it means that do motor and sensory. Okay. Then the other thing. So when you, when you hear that uh, instruction that uh, examine the lower limbs neurologically. It is most likely going to be a paraparesis, and you should know the causes of paraparesis or paraplegia. Um, TB, metastatic spine disease, cord compression, uh, transverse myelitis, Glen Barr syndrome, um, uh, disc herniation, fracture associated cord compression. You see those things. Okay, I know you know them. That is fine. A spinal tumor here. Yeah. Then, another instruction will be examine the gait of this patient. Examine the gait of this patient. Once you hear that, you see that now it's it's, it's most likely Parkinson. Especially when you hear examine the gait of the patient and you look at the patient's face, the patient is neither smiling nor frowning. That is an expressionless face. Hypomimia, Parkinson's. Do you get it? So these are the various conditions you should actually keep in your head. Management of strokes, management of paraparesis and then facial nerve management, I mean pulse management and then um, Parkinson's. So I'm going to begin with examination of the, um, I mean motor examination, the first instruction, motor examination. Is that okay? Okay, you can end. Okay. 